Gold prices have traded in a tight range following the Federal Reserve's announcement last week of keeping interest rates low until 2022. How can markets proceed from here? Joining me today is Peter Hug, Global Trading Director of Keiko Metals. Peter, welcome back. Good to be here. Tell us about the range that has been kind of stuck in for the last couple of weeks, even despite the Fed's relatively dovish announcement. We haven't seen a breakout past 1740. Yeah, I mean, I think the market's, uh, you know, a little bit confused. Uh, there's a lot of mixed signals in the market. Uh, you know, anything south of 1700 has been met with buying and, uh, you know, pop the price back over 17. Um, you know, gold's in a, a relatively tight range. Uh, you know, I don't want to say 1680, 1750. Uh, you know, it's a, that, you know, that's a bit absurd. But, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I think the 1700 level uh, it has good support. Uh, and I think what traders are looking for uh, from a technical perspective is a break over 1750. Uh, you know, we've uh, hit that number on the cash market a couple of times and it's backed away. So, you know, we're sort of in that tight range uh, uh, between sort of 1700 and 1750. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I, you know what the Fed has done, uh, especially given uh, given the fact that they've uh, indicated that they're going to keep their policies unchanged until 2022. Uh, indicates to me that uh, there's a definitive floor uh, uh, to protect investors. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, maybe the 1650, 1675 level. Uh, but I, you know, I think uh, it'll. It's just a matter of time before gold breaks to the upside. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we're coming into the summer, and uh, you know that's not usually a big demand season until generally about mid-August. Right. Uh, so, so there are some seasonal factors against uh, the move happening sooner. Uh, but again, I, I, you know, I think uh, investors at these levels uh, won't be disappointed uh, when they look at their entry point. If they're not in the market yet, uh, when they look at the price uh, somewhere near, uh, you know, uh, mid fall, late fall. You must remember the uh, summer rally we had last year in gold prices. Uh, are the same forces still in play? Today, I mean, obviously the fundamentals have shifted, but uh, are you seeing similarities at all? Well, I, you know, I, well, obviously last summer we didn't have the COVID issue, uh, you know, and I think it's the psychology. Uh, it's really a belief system right now, and if you believe that the COVID uh, 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 crisis is behind us, and uh, you know, uh, and that the economy uh, is starting to generate legs. Uh, then um, I think you need to be bullish the market because I think the Fed, uh, given what they said last week, uh, that they were going to hold rates, uh, you know, until 2022, uh, is going to be very positive for the metals. If you are of the belief that the stock market is fully valued uh, and uh, there might be a second wave that causes a drop in the stock market, believe it or not, I, I don't think that would be bullish for the metals. I think the initial reaction for the metals will be lower. Uh, as people begin to panic and, and start to raise cash. So it's really uh, depending on how you come down on those two systems. Assuming everything is just sort of normal, and even if uh, you know, we don't get growth at uh, you know, 2% next year uh, or even at the end of this year, um, the fact that the central banks have basically uh, indicated that they are going to be extremely flush with liquidity uh, for the next year and a half uh, it, it's difficult to be bearish of the gold market. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of when it's going to break out, not if. Um, but again, it's a matter of patience. The Fed has indicated their willingness to keep rates low, but they haven't actually announced um, another uh, purchasing program of uh, bond buying right after a couple weeks ago when the second wave of the coronavirus was reported to have hit the U.S. Were you surprised at this? I mean, when the first wave hit, trillions of dollars were announced to be printed. Yeah, I mean, they, they put a lot of money into this economy. I mean, there's $3 trillion floating around in this economy right now when you uh, add the Fed and, uh, you know, the fiscal stimulus from the government. So, you know, I mean, it takes some time uh, to feed into the economy. I mean, if you look at retail sales this morning, they were expecting them to be up about 7%. They were up 17%. Uh, so it looks to me like, uh, uh, you know, individuals that got these stimulus checks, uh, you yeah. know, did sit on them and, uh, you know, put them away in their savings accounts, they spent them. So, uh, you know, I think based on that, uh, you know, I think the Fed uh, and the government, uh, quite frankly, uh, because there has been talk that they're going to come up with another program, might just sit back and, you know, give it 30 days. Uh, now, where we're going to sort of, sort of, where the rubber meets the road uh, is going to be in July, 
August, uh, when this stimulus money from the fiscal side is going to end. Now the question is, will Congress extend that, or are they going to are they going to stop it? And and that could be a uh, sort of a sort of a, a turning point in the market. And uh, I think if the uh, Congress moves ahead and extends it through the end of September uh, to make sure the schools are opened. Uh, then I think uh, you'll see the metals and the uh, stock market continue on an upward uh, trajectory. If Congress stops it and the economy slows down abruptly, because now people uh, that are not going to get their jobs back and, uh, you know, the unemployment rate is not going to come back down from 16 percent to three. Uh, I think it'll be lucky to come back down to 10. Um, okay. And, you know, at that level, you know, then uh, we're starting to talk about, well, you know, the economy really isn't isn't fully running on all gears. Now the stock market runs uh, uh, runs into pressure. And uh, in, in that context, I think the immediate reaction on the metals will be first a down move. And then again, I believe the Fed and the government will come in, rescue the package and then uh, metals will take off again. So, yeah, if you're not in the market, uh, I think right now is a good time to consider if you're looking to buy physical. I mean, uh, a couple of weeks back when I uh, was on on the show, I indicated that we strongly advised our clients not to buy physical and chase the premiums. And uh, our our clients uh, have been rewarded accordingly. Uh, Eagle premiums and Buffalo gold, uh, gold uh, Buffalo and Eagle premiums have come down to pre-COVID uh, uh, prices. Um, so they're available at the same premiums that they were uh, back in February of this year. Uh, the only uh, outlier is the Silver Eagle, which is still ridiculously priced at anywhere between uh, you know uh, eight and ten dollars over uh, silver. Uh, whereas the, you know the Silver Maple Leaf is now available at uh, you know four dollars. Uh, Hundred ounce silver bars are available south of a uh, dollar fifty. So a lot of the premiums are normalizing. So we're finding the clients that bought alternative uh, sort of hedges uh, when the uh, COVID uh, pandemic broke out are now able to swap their uh, their hedge into physical product and saving themselves anywhere from 50 to 80 uh, percent from where they would have uh, uh, entered the market had they paid the premiums back, uh, you know, a couple of months back. Yeah. So overall, the market is normalizing. Um what I'm having difficulty with is, uh, you know, prior to COVID-19, uh, we uh, I saw the equity market as fully valued. And, you know, we're about 10% away from that level right now, at least on the Dow and the NASDAQ, we're over that level. And um, I, I, I just don't see the valuations making sense. So I'm a little skeptical about the, um, the robustness of the equity rally. So in that context, I think the metals uh, might in the short term, especially given the seasonal factors, have a bit of softness. But by year end, I think uh, the 2011 high in gold, which was 1920-ish, uh, I think will be there or higher. That was actually my next question because uh, you mentioned that a lockdown, a second lockdown is unlikely to occur. Uh, equities bulls have referenced the recent decline in the unemployment rate as their argument for the economy being on track to going uh, back to a full recovery. And that's the source of their optimism. And you're saying that, well, it's unlikely we'll drop below 10%. Even at 10%, Peter, we're still higher than 28, uh, 2008 levels of unemployment. So, uh, I mean, I, I, do you think people are just um, forgetting the fact that even a recovery from bad to less bad, we're still at a pretty bad situation? Would you agree with that statement? Well, I mean, if you think 10% unemployment is a good situation, uh, uh, yeah, then... <laughs> how, does this, how does this weigh in on volatility, you think? Well, I mean, I think you've got to look... Uh, I, I mean, I think you just got to open your eyes and go outside. I mean, if you go to a restaurant right now, you notice that the capacity is at 25%. I mean, most restaurants don't make money at 100% capacity. Uh, so I'm not sure how that works out. Uh, I mean, airlines don't make money. They break even at 75% capacity. They're right now at 20% capacity, 25% capacity. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to be the first guy to get on a cruise ship. I'm not suggesting that people won't, but I'm not going to be the first guy on a cruise ship. Yeah. So, there, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that uh, that that is still uh, making people nervous. Now, it, you know, if we have... a, a 
a vaccine and, you know, and, and, you know, everything goes away and everybody can get a needle and nobody has to worry that, you know, that changes the dynamics of the market. But until then, um, you know, I'm not sure you're going to get the capacity uh, in the economy that we had in February for at least probably a year. So on that basis, with the equity market in February fully priced, it was almost uh, was trading at about a, a 19 multiple. Now it's trading at a 22 multiple right. on an economy that's opened at 25%. I mean, it makes no sense to me. I, I understand the exuberance. Uh, what concerns me here is, you know, maybe it's just the big boys out there just pushing this market up so they can get out. So who's left holding the bag? And that's the retail investor. And I think yeah. that's likely what's happening here, because from a valuation perspective, this doesn't make sense. So, Peter, you think the uh, broad equities indices are overvalued. What do you think about the gold miners indices? Uh, the GDX of uh, Van Eck Gold Miners uh, ETF is down today uh, nearly 2% on a day when the S&P 500 is up nearly 2%. Uh, 2%. Why the disconnect here? Yeah, I mean, on the gold miners, uh, I mean, over my career, uh, I, I break them into, you know, now we've got a third group, which is the uh, streamers, but, you know, from, you know, 73, when I got into this market, uh, you know, until about five years ago, or maybe 10 years ago, uh, we didn't have the third, uh, the, the third element, but the two primary elements are the juniors and, uh, you know, basically the, the seniors, and the seniors are doing well. Uh, you know, and, and, and they're maintaining their value uh, relative to uh, where gold is going. The juniors, uh, you know, are a crapshoot. You know, I mean, the old saying back in the 70s and 80s, you buy 10, expect nine to go bankrupt, and maybe you get a home run with the uh, with the 10th. Uh, yeah, I mean, these guys need capital. Uh, I mean, it's not the best market to raise credit in. Um, and, uh, you know, and uh, I think there is still this lingering suspicion by investors on the juniors that, you know, the management teams of these juniors have just been sort of raking uh, high salaries in. And whenever they ran out of cash, they just diluted the shares. So, yeah. you know, unless you're a producing mine um, that, you know, that that uh, that can bring that shows positive cash flow, uh, I think juniors are still to be avoided. So there any any kind of uh, pop in the market is met by profit taking because that's strictly a spec market. Uh, the seniors are doing well. I mean, the, the, the streamers, I mean, look at Wheaton uh, right now. I mean, it's trading at an almost all time high. Uh, so, you know, there are places within the mining sector where you can get a good return and it's relatively safe. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you when you take it into a broad index perspective and you add the juniors and everything else into that. Uh, right. Yeah, it gets distorted. Uh, uh, again, I'm not a fan of the juniors. Uh, uh, I'm you know a fan of a senior producer that has positive cash flow and uh, the streaming companies. I've been very bullish to streaming companies for three years now. Okay, last question, Peter. We're looking at the PGMs offline. You said that platinum at around $819 today on Thursday is undervalued. and It should be at around $1,000. Uh, what assumptions are you making here? Are you assuming, again, economic pickup and recovery following uh, uh, COVID? Uh, no, again, I mean, uh, just, to, just to put that in the context, uh, uh, it, again, if you believe that the worst is behind us and everything is going to be cool, and we're going to move slowly towards a recovery, uh, you know, and, and the logistics change open, uh, uh, logistics and everything opens up and becomes normalized uh, and car sales start to increase, uh, then the dynamics of supply and demand, when you look at uh, uh, PGM, spe specifically a, a metal like palladium and or rhodium, uh, they are inexpensive uh, based on supply and demand. I mean, there is a, a shortage of palladium in the market. Um, in February, there was a considerable shortage in, uh, in palladium in the market on anticipated car sales for 2020 prior to COVID. And, you know, palladium ran up to $2,700. It's right. now trading at $1,900. Rhodium traded as high as uh, $12,000 an ounce. So those two metals, I think, if you believe that we are in an economic recovery, are relatively inexpensive. Platinum um, at $830 currently, I think is inexpensive. 
I'm not as bullish platinum as I am palladium and rhodium on the basis of an economic recovery because, again, platinum's usage has dropped because of their uh, of its limited usage now in gas gas vehicles. Uh, but still, platinum at $830 uh, based on supply and demand is undervalued. Again, if you believe the economic recovery has legs, and uh, I think a minimum target on platinum on my on that basis, if you believe that context uh, would be uh, at least a thousand dollars, possibly as high as twelve hundred. Fantastic! Great thoughts today, Peter. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. And thank you for watching Kiko News. Kiko will be covering the Minds and Money Online Connect, which is a virtual conference coming up later this month. So stay tuned for our coverage. Mm -hmm.